in today's episode... Hello and welcome to the workshop. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at the new Raptor Pro by Creality. So a few months back, I made an episode where I used the Creality Otter to scan Nicole's face and scan Courtney, and then I 3D printed them. Well, Creality also saw that episode and they enjoyed it so much that they sent me the new Raptor Pro to try. Now, I'm sure most of you guys already know that Creality is one of the leading global consumer level 3D printing brands. But what you might not know is the full features of the Raptor Pro. Now I have a list here with them all on there, so let's run through them. Now the Raptor Pro has two modes. It has 29 blue laser lines, 22 that are cross, and 7 that are parallel. Plus it has NIR mode. It has a volumetric accuracy of 0.2 to 157 inches. Or if you're in Australia like me, that's 5 millimeters to 4,000 millimeters. That's 4 meters long. That is a huge object. It has meteorology grade accuracy with up to 0.02 millimeters with the blue laser line mode or up to 0.08 millimeters with the NIR mode. It has scanning speeds of up to 60 frames per second or 660,000 points per second with the blue laser line or up to 30 frames per second in NIR mode. So those specs seem to be pretty good. So I think what we need to do now is get this out of the box and take a look. Wow, look at this case. Oh my goodness. That is some protection right there. Cool little handle on it. Wow, I like that. Have a look at this. What do we got? Little pouch, some instructions. What do we have here? A couple of little boxes. Oh, this is what we want to see. Let's just take a look at this for a moment. So this is the Raptor Pro. Have a look at that. Wow, that looks nice. I thought the Otter was cool. This is next level. All right, what else do we have? Some more boxes. Looks like we have a calibration plate. And that might be it. Wow, I love this box. Now I'm assuming these are just gonna be cables. Yep, that's our computer cable, our USB. That's handy. That's our Australian plug, and it looks like We've got a US plug, a European plug, and uh, I think that might be a Chinese plug. Very nice. All right, that is what comes in the box. So I think what I might do now is read the instructions, download the software so we can actually use it, and, uh, and do a scan. That's what we're all here for, right? Do a scan and see how good it looks. I love how everything just fits nicely in its place. And then you can just lock this bad boy up and take it wherever you want. So I have now finished reading the instructions. I've also downloaded Creality Scan. Now, if you guys need that, it's really easy to find. You head over to creality.com, hit the software page and choose whatever version you need, whether it's Windows or Mac. I've got the Mac version. Now, after reading the instructions, I have learned that my Mac is most likely gonna be underpowered for the Raptor Pro but I still think it's gonna work. So I've plugged the scanner in, it's all good to go. It's into the USB port. Now let's take a look at what we're gonna scan. So as we know, the Raptor Pro has the blue light laser scanning, and I feel that's gonna be really beneficial in the fabrication world. So I've got myself an old alternator here. This is actually the one off Courtney's car. It no longer works. And I thought what might be cool is to try and scan these brackets here. Because let's say you were building a custom hot rod or a custom car, and you needed to do some fab work for a bracket, what you can do is you can scan this. Once you've got the scan, you can throw it in a Fusion 360. You can take all your measurements, draw yourself a really cool bracket, and then cut it out. Cut it out on a water jet or CNC, whatever you need to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the scanner, we're gonna use it in blue light mode, 
We're gonna scan these brackets. Now, as you can see, we do have our reflective markers. So when you're using blue light lasers, you do need reflective markers. And they do give you a bunch too. Look at all these we've got. I think we've got hundreds and hundreds of them. Now, I did 3D print myself so these little marker holders. And as you can see, I just stuck them all around. So basically what that does is it's a reference for the laser. So if the laser starts to lose tracking, it can pick up these reflective markers and know where to go. So when it's picking up all the detail, it basically knows where to put it in place. So you can see there, we've got all the markers on. I threw a couple on top there, a couple on the side, because like I said, we are focusing on the bracket here. So now that we have the software open, I have the Raptor Pro connected to the computer via USB. It also has its own separate power supply, which you can see up there. If you look in the top corner, it tells us the Creality Raptor Pro is connected. I have already done the calibrate. It is exactly the same as the Otter, where you get your calibration board and you lift it up, lift it down and off to the sides. That's really simple to do. So now that that's done, we can go ahead and select a new project. Now, as you can see, we have our two options, blue laser mode or infrared mode. So for this one, we are using blue laser. This is the standard settings that come up. You can adjust them if you like. Once we're happy with that, we can go scan. Now this screen here looks exactly the same as when I use the Otter. You wanna keep your scanner in the optimal range. If it comes down here, you just need to move further away. And if it's up the top here, you just need to move closer. But I'll show you a bit more of that once we start scanning. So let's get started. So the first thing you'll notice is that the blue lights have come on. Now, once we pick up the scanner, the lasers will fire up, which you can see just there. Now, if you look at the screen, you'll see all those little dots. Now, those dots are our reference markers. And like I said before, the more markers you have, the easier it's going to be to scan because the scanner can easily reference back to where it was. So all we have to do now is make sure that our exposure and brightness are right. You can see just there. You can also adjust them on the back here. It's actually looking pretty good at the settings that I have. So all I have to do is press play on the back here. You can even do that on the software at the top there. And you'll notice that it is already mapping our alternator. It is so fast. And like I said, my Mac is actually slightly underpowered and it's still doing it pretty fast. Now you'll remember that I mentioned before about keeping it in the optimal range which you can see on the side there. So if I pull the scanner out, it moves up telling me to move closer. And you'll see there once I go back in, we're back in the optimal range. So all you do is just move all around your workpiece, scanning everything you need. Now I'm just gonna focus on the brackets because that's pretty much all I need off this piece. Okay, I think we have a pretty good scan now. Let's hit pause and take a look. Now, because we are happy with that, we can complete the scan. Yes, complete it. And here we have our alternator. Check that out. That looks so cool. Now, to be able to use this in Fusion 360, all we have to do is process it. And fortunately for us, we can do a one-click process so that's what we're about to do. And there we have it. The process is finished. How nice does that alternator look? Now see these bits down the bottom here? If we don't want them, all you have to do is hold shift on your keyboard and you can just trace it out like that. Real simple. Hit delete and it's gone. Let me show you that one more time. So hold shift, circle the object, hit delete, gone. I'm doing it a bit janky because I'm doing it one-handed, but you kind of get the idea, right? Watch that, ready? Gone. Any little bits you don't want, gone. I could even get rid of this whole base plate if I wanted. Gone. Easy as that. Now I'm sure you guys are probably thinking, wow, that scan looks pretty good, right? Well, let me tell you, I can actually get it looking better by scanning it again, but this time doing it in parallel mode. Now, switching to parallel mode is super easy. You can see here we have a little box that we need to check. And once we do it, 
we are now switched over to the seven parallel lines. So I'm gonna scan this alternator again, and then we can compare the two and see how they look. That's looking like we have a good scan. So let's hit pause and hit stop on the software. And let's take a look. Wow, that looks way better. Look at the detail we have now in those brackets and look how smooth it is. That looks amazing. So I guess if you are gonna scan something small like this alternator, definitely use the parallel mode because you are gonna get a far detailed image or a detailed scan. But if you are going to scan something larger, like maybe the size of this cabinet, definitely switch to the cross mode. So I think we might do that now and find something larger to scan. Now I figured since we are inside my workshop, the biggest thing I have in here is my turning lathe. Look at the size of this thing. Now you can already see that I've stuck all my reflective markers all over it. So this is going to be quite interesting. Let's fire up this laser again and see how well it can scan my lathe. Now, as you can see, I've used the bigger reflective dots this time, since we're using a larger object. Okay, I have finished scanning my lathe. Now, are you guys ready to see it in 3D? Have a look at this. It turned out so good. I mean, have a look at the sticker on the front here. That sticker there, that's my Ben's work sticker. And look at this, it only has a tiny lip on it and yet it's picked it up. And you can almost read Ben's works on the front there. So this has turned out really good. Now this would come in handy if ever I needed to make myself a bracket or a jig that I needed to fit precisely between there and have a certain height. All I have to do is put this file into Fusion 360, take all my measurements, design myself a bracket or a jig and away I go. It's as simple as that. So if you guys need to scan something large like this, make sure you use the cross lines. And if you need to do something smaller like this, make sure you use the parallel lines. Both of those modes do offer accuracy up to 0.02. So they're both pretty good. Well, now that we've seen the Raptor Pro in its laser mode, I think we need to try it again in the infrared mode. Now, as you guys saw in the auto video, I scanned Nicole's face and I scanned Courtney's full body. So I think what we need to do this time is scan Courtney again, but this time when I 3D print her, I'm gonna do something a little different with it. So let's give it a go. So as you just saw by that scan, I only needed Courtney's face. So that's what I selected in the software. I've done the one click process. And as you can see now, we're optimizing it. It shouldn't take too much longer, but it looks really good. It's picked up all the details. You can even see her necklace here and a bit of her hair that come down the side. So the rendering is all done. We have our finished mesh. Have a look inside of here. This is the most creepiest part. Look at that. It looks so funny. Anyway, Courtney's face is all done now, so all I have to do is put this into the 3D printing software. I'm gonna cut out what I don't need, and then we can start printing the face.
So now that Courtney's face has been cured under the UV lamp, it's time to give it a paint. Now the first thing I need to do is give it a spray with some undercoat. So now that I've finished painting Courtney's face, there's just one more thing I need to add. Well, I gotta be honest, I totally underestimated how hard it would be to glue hair on a 3D print. And now I know. And also, by the way, Courtney did want a haircut, so it was kind of a bonus for me. But what do you guys reckon of this? Do you reckon that looks like Courtney? I think it turned out amazing. I absolutely love it. Now, I did have a bit of drama on top here with the super glue, but unfortunately, I couldn't really avoid it. I did switch to the hot glue gun, which definitely helped a lot. But I think it looks really good. I think it looks just like her. Now, I guess you're wondering why I've got this. Well, you're about to find out, and that is because I'm going to turn her into a bobblehead. What do you think, Courtney? Do you like it? Now, I'm not too sure where I'm going to stick this yet, but if you guys follow us on our second Maker channel, I'm sure you'll see it sticking around. If you guys want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description or at the top of the screen here. Well guys, what did you think of this episode? I had an absolute blast using this Raptor Pro. And I've got to admit, it's far superior to the Otter. That blue light laser is next level. Now if you guys want to try it for yourself, there's a ton of links in the description. It's actually just been released. This thing is brand new. So I'm sure there's a deal out there for you. So go ahead, click the links below, check it out. Also, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting the like button. In fact, hit the like button for Courtney, because I think she did really well bringing herself out here and letting me scan her and then turning her into this face. <laughs> her bobble face, I guess you'd call it. Also, leave her a comment, because I know she reads them all and she really does appreciate you guys. Now, if you guys want to check out our second Maker channel, there's a link at the top of the screen here and in the description. You'll be able to see where we end, where we end up sticking Courtney. Who knows where it's going to be, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.